Hey, what's up world? It's Caleb from Caleb's Video Maker 2. This video, we are going to talk about the create table statement in SQL Server. So the very first thing is you want to click new query. Now the create table statement is used to create tables, obviously. So this video is going to walk you through that process and tell you everything you need to know to create a table. Now the very first thing once you're in this query window is that you want to click this little drop down box and choose the database that you are working with. The previous video I created this database called subscribe. <laughs> You know, I got to advertise, right? <laughs> and that's the database I'm going to be using. So I click that. And then inside of here, I want to create a table for animals. Now, the command to create a table is actually very simple. All you literally do is say create table and then pick a name for that table. So we'll say animals. And then you put parentheses. Now, what are the parentheses for? Well, these are actually where the columns go. So I usually space this out and tab in. That way it's a little bit formatted a little better. And then each column I put on a new line. But before I do that, there's a couple things I wanted to discuss. The first thing is conventions. Conventions are these things that programmers follow to help them write more readable code. It's an agreed upon way on how to write something. SQL is very easy to work with in that you're allowed to type things basically however you want. So this create word, it could be create in lowercase and it works exactly the same way. But by convention, I put it in uppercases. That's because, oh, can't type. <laughs> that's because that's what most people do. And that way, when I'm having a problem and I post my code online, people aren't like, uh, what the crap is this? They can actually read my code because I follow a common convention. In addition to that, all database objects are written as Pascal casing. And what that is, is each word starts with a capital letter, and then the rest of the characters are lowercase. So for example, if we had two words, we could say animal profiles. And you can see that there's a capital for each word. So that's basically all I wanted to talk about for that. So let's move on to creating the columns. Now the very first thing I do is I think of the name of the columns. After that, I think of the data type for the columns. And then lastly, I think of any constraints for those columns. So let's go with the names first. We'll have an ID, and then I put a comma to say there's another column coming. We'll have a name, and then we'll have a species. So these are three columns we could start with, but we need to consider what data type we want each of these columns to be. I haven't discussed data types in a lot of depth, but I'm going to introduce you to two of the most common data types. The first one is int. Now an int is short for integer, and that means a whole number. This is used for numeric data and is almost always going to be used for the ID column. Now moving on to the name, this one's going to require character data, so string data. That means we need to use a data type like varchar, which stands for variable length character sequence. <laughs> well, it might not stand for that whole thing, but that's essentially what varchar is. The thing with varchar though, is that we wanna say how long we want the name to be able to be. So we need to give it a max length. So you need to ask yourself, what is the longest name I want to allow in my database? Now I'm going to use 50. I think that's more than enough characters for a name. And if your name's longer than 50 characters, you should, uh, <laughs> you know, get a nickname or something. <laughs> you wanna make sure you put that number within parentheses. Now I'm going to use the same data type for species. Later though, you could replace that with a foreign key to a species table. And what that would do is it would reduce redundant data and also help protect against mistakes. But for now, since we're just focusing on creating one table, I think that is more than good. <laughs> then we're going to want to end that with a semicolon, of course. This is actually all you need to create a table. It has all of the columns and has all the data types. Earlier, I mentioned constraints. Well, constraints are actually optional. So this should work if I run this create table statement. And you can see that it worked. And you can see it over in your object explorer if you go to databases, subscribe, tables, um, then let's try refreshing this. And you can see it right there. Now you can expand it and see the columns right here. Now you might be thinking, what about the constraints? You know, just because they're optional, we can't leave them out. They're important. <laughs> and I would have to agree. It's always important to have a primary key because in this situation we have an ID, but you can see it's labeled null and also it's not unique. And therefore it's really just not suitable as the primary key. <laughs> so we need to go back to this table and add some constraints. That's what we're going to be talking about in the next video. Thanks guys and I'll see you then. Also, please be sure to subscribe and click like on this video.